In this video, we're gonna make this bar chart in D3. Then in part two, we'll add a title, captions, and additional styling to really up the storytelling impact of the chart. I recommend using VS Code for your development environment because it's really easy to use. And you can go in and get this live server plugin, which lets you right click on your HTML file and hit open in live server. Then you'll have a live preview while you're developing your viz. All the files you'll need to follow along or to get this viz are included in the description below. Your HTML file should have a title and inside the body, you'll need to add a div ID and give it a name. I've called it bog body chart. And then in a script tag, you'll need to call the D3 visualization library. And then also the script that we'll be making today. We'll begin by setting up our margins, our height and our width. You can set these to anything you'd like. I've gone with 660 for width and 400 for the height. And I've set up these margin values based on some iterating I did earlier. Once we've set up our margins, our width and our height, we will create our SVG container. Get that out of the way so we can see a bit better. To create our SVG, we will use D3 select and we're gonna select the div ID that we set up earlier, which you can see right here. And we're gonna append an SVG to it. That SVG will have a few attributes, a width attribute and a height attribute. The width will be the width plus the margin left and margin right, and the height will be the height plus the margin top and margin bottom. We'll append a group to it and then transform and translate this by the margin left and margin top. After that, we will load and process our data. To do that, we're gonna use D3 CSV and reference our CSV file, which I have called bog underscore body slash CSV. I prepared this CSV based on source data that's also linked down below if you wanted to try to make this yourself. After we've loaded it with D3 CSV, we're then going to do something with the data. So we'll use the then call, reference the data, and we're going to take every total value and make it a number. By putting this plus in here, we're saying these totals are not strings, they're numbers. And we can see that if we console log our data. We can go into our console, we can see here that we have an array of objects, which has our bog body types and the total. We'll get rid of that console log and move on. There's other things we'd like to do with that data, and I've got them all commented out here. So we're gonna move the end of that function to the bottom. I'm gonna save sorting the data for the end so we can kind of see that in action. So the next thing we'll do is set up the X and Y scales. For the X scale, we're gonna use D3 scale linear. We're gonna give it a range of zero to the width of the chart. Now remember, the range is the pixels, basically the universe of pixels where you're visualization is going to live. And we're going to say that the domain of data that will live in those pixels is going to be zero to the biggest number in our data set. So we'll use d3.max to call our data and look at all the totals. This will return the biggest one. For the Y, we're gonna use D3 scale band since we're making a horizontal bar chart. We're gonna give it a range of the height to zero, a little padding in between each bar, and the domain of data that will live in this range is going to be all the bog body types. We can do that with a map function. So we'll map through the data and return all the bog body types. After that, we're going to actually create the axes that will have this information in them. And so we'll create a constant for the x-axis and the y-axis. For the x-axis, we'll just call d3axis bottom and pass in our x. And for the y-axis, we'll use d3axis left and call in our y. Then we'll add those to the chart. We'll use svg.append, so we're referencing our svg that we built up here, and we're going to append a new group element to it. We'll give it a class attribute called x-axis. We're going to do another transform and translate it by the height. This is what moves it from the top of the chart to the bottom. If we didn't have this here, it would be at the top. And then we're gonna call our x-axis and let it save. And there we go, we have our x-axis down here on the bottom. For our y-axis, we'll call our SVG again and append another group to it. And we'll just call our y-axis. When we hit save, our y-axis shows up and there's all of our bog body types. Now let's get some bars. To add the bars to the chart, we're gonna again reference our SVG and we'll use select all bar. We'll add our data and we'll enter it into the visualization. Once we've done that, we'll append rectangle objects to the data. We'll give it a class of bar and we're gonna set the Y to all the bog body types. So it's a function of the data and we're gonna return each of these bog body types. The height of each one of these bars is based on the band width that's inside of this Y that we built earlier. So for the X, we're gonna start all of those at zero. So they'll all begin here against our left axis. And the width of these bars is going to be the total value that's appropriate for each one of these bog body types. And we'll give it a sky blue color so we can see them. When we hit save, we have some bars. Now, I don't love that they're on top of the axis, so I'm gonna take this piece of code and move it above where we added the axis lines. And you'll see it settles back and looks quite nice. The final thing we'll do for this version is come back up here to sort the data. We'll use D3 sort, and once we hit save, our bars will be sorted in an appropriate order. 
And there you have it, a really clean and simple bar chart in D3. In the next video, we're gonna add a title, a caption, and some stylistic adjustments to really heighten the storytelling impact of this chart. I'll see you then, and thanks for watching.